Adventures in Research. Those tenement houses are good enough for the immigrants that live in them. Too good, in fact. Then you refuse to clean them up. Is that your answer? I do. And there's no law can make me do it. I'll thank you to mind your own business, Dr. Smith. Good day. This is Paul Shannon introducing another in the series of programs dealing with the thrilling adventures to be found in the field of scientific research as told by the men of science themselves. Today's story by Dr. Phillips Thomas, research engineer of the Westinghouse Research Laboratories, highlights one man's courageous struggle against the forces of ignorance, greed, and corruption, pitting his medical knowledge in a fight to the finish against one of man's greatest scourges, disease. 1853, and New York, city of a million people, is in the grip of a deadly typhus epidemic. Hospitals are overcrowded with fever-ridden patients, attended by weary, overworked doctors. At Bellevue Hospital, a hasty conference is being held. Well, gentlemen, I suppose you all know about Dr. Johnstone. He died just 20 minutes ago. Typhus. Out of our staff of 12 doctors here at Bellevue, seven are down with a typhus fever. Three have died of it. And the few of us who are left must take over their duties until such time as new men are available. I am told that four doctors are being assigned to Bellevue, which will allow some of us to get some much-needed rest. And Jeffrey's there, I know, hasn't had any sleep for two days. Neither have you, Dr. Blake. Uh, Meanwhile, the hospital is too overcrowded to hold another patient. And the overflow must go to the branch hospital that has been established on Blackwell Island. Dr. Johnstone was the visiting doctor there. Exactly. And his place must be filled immediately if we are to keep this epidemic from spreading. Dr. Smith, how do you feel? Oh, I feel all right. I'm one of the lucky ones you mentioned a moment ago. I'm immune from typhus, apparently. Good. You will report to Blackwell Island Hospital right away. Well, gentlemen, back to work. And here are the records, Dr. Smith. Oh, thank you, nurse. Uh, Just leave them here. I want to look over them very carefully. Uh, By the way, how's the little girl in Ward 2? She died this morning, about 4 o'clock. Uh... Well, according to this record, more than a hundred of our patients list their address as East 22nd Street, all living at the same house, or block of houses. Yes, it's a tenement house, Doctor. Hmm. Well, I'm going to have a look at those tenements, nurse. I'll be back in an hour or so. Very well, Doctor. A nest of typhus if I ever saw one. That whole building looks as though it's ready to fall to pieces. Is it me you're talking to, mister? Uh, oh, no. I I was talking to myself. Do you live here? Oh, I do. And who's asking the question and why? I'm Dr. Stephen Smith from Blackwell Island Hospital. I just came here to inspect this building. Oh, your pardon, doctor. Faith, it's a poor spot you've come to inspect. As filthy a hole as ever I lived in. So I see. Why doesn't someone clean up all this refuse in the street? Clean it up. And who'd be doing it? Who'd be having the strength, sick as they are of the fever? Go inside. You're a doctor. See for yourself. You're used to seeing dying people. Well, you'll see plenty of them in there. Go on in. Yes, Dr. Stephen Smith, a qualified surgeon at 30 years of age was used to seeing dying people. But as he walked through the rooms of the tenement house, noted the broken doors and windows, the filthy, rotting straw that served as bedding for the ill, underfed, miserable men, women, and children crowded into those rooms, his nostrils were assailed by the same sickening odor that told his medical mind that here was a breeding spot of pestilence. Did you see? Did you find out what you want to know, Doctor? Yes, I did. 
Who owns this block of tenements? I don't know. How can I find out? I don't know. Maybe the agent can tell you. He lives uptown. Go ask him. I tell you, I don't know who the owner is. All I do is collect the rents. I can't help you. Very well. Perhaps the police department will tell me what I want to know. Well, Doctor, we've made a thorough search for any law or city ordinance that compels the owner to clean up his holdings, and there isn't any such law or ordinance. Then there should be one. I tell you it's a crime that such a pest hole should exist in the very heart of a city as big as New York. I agree with you, but what can we do? Who owns that tenement block? I'll see the owner, myself. Well, no. It was a job to find the owner, but we did it. We found him by looking up the tax records. He lives in a swell neighborhood near Union Square. Here is the address. But, sir, I urge you to reconsider your decision. I beg you to clean up this sinkhole of disease before it spreads to your own doorstep. You can talk from now till doomsday and I'll not lift a finger. Why should I clean it up? It's good enough for the immigrants that live in it. That's your last word. That's my last word. Those filthy immigrants have ruined my building as it is. And I'll not move a finger in the matter. And there's no law can make me. Good day to you, Dr. Smith. Dr. Stephen Smith was a man who was not easily discouraged. He went to William Cullen Bryant, editor of the Evening Post, and told his story. Dr. Smith, you get the police to have the owner of this building brought into court, and I'll have the story made public. Hey, there he is. Can I get a statement from you about the tenement house you own on 22nd Street? Who are you, and why do you want a statement? I'm a reporter on the Evening Post. Mr. Bryant, my editor, wants a story in that typhus nest you have there. I have nothing to say. Stand aside. I'm going into the courthouse. Well, things have come to a pretty point. Yes, Your Honor. I realize the responsibility is mine. And I promise to have the house vacated and reconstructed completely. Yes, Your Honor, I'll clean it up. A dangerous spot was eliminated, but New York had received a scare. Prominent citizens, aroused by the story of the East 22nd Street tenement episode, agitated for sanitary reforms, proposed health laws, which were steadily defeated by city government officials, who, under the protection of the corrupt political boss Tweed, pocketed the money intended for sanitary measures. In 1864, Dr. Stephen Smith, head of a committee on public health, presented a new health law to the state legislature. At the hearing... Gentlemen, you have heard the charges made by Dr. Smith and his committee on public health. Charges that the city of New York houses many breeding places for disease. These are serious charges, and I call on the city inspector to answer them. The charges made are utterly false, and I deny every one of them, separately and collectively. <laughs> Therefore, in view of the findings of my committee, I recommend that this bill be defeated. This meeting is called for the purpose of organizing a corps of inspectors to make a house-to-house -house inspection throughout the entire city of New York. And it's about time. Every single house in every district will be visited. And each inspector will be accompanied by one of you doctors who have volunteered your services. Your job will be to note conditions and make a complete report to this citizens' committee. Gentlemen, it's up to us to present such an overwhelming mass of evidence that the state legislature can do no other than pass the bill we shall present. And I offer as evidence these 17 volumes of authentic reports on health conditions in New York. I ask that the bill we have drawn up 
be passed by this legislature. You would have us believe that a half million people are packed into an area of only two square miles, that refuse and garbage in some streets in our city is two and as much as three feet deep, that 50% of the deaths in some districts could be prevented, and we are also asked to believe... Page after page, volume after volume, filled with reports of unspeakable health, a mass of irrefutable evidence that surely must, of its own weight, smother all opposition. And yet... I ask that any decision be delayed in order that I can make an investigation and verify the charges made in this report. Well, this hearing is postponed pending further investigation by the city inspector. In view of the fact that there is considerable doubt as to the authenticity of the report's presented by Dr. Smith and his committee, I recommend that this bill be defeated. Another man might have been discouraged and given up the fight, but not Dr. Stephen Smith. He intensified his campaign of health. Hey, did you read this, Mabel? Paper says conditions here in New York are terrible. Dangerous, pestilence breeding spots, it calls them. He's right, too. I've seen some of them. They sure need fumigating or something. There's only one way the people of New York can prevent another epidemic in this city. That's by voting right in the fall elections. By defeating the legislators who voted against the bill, which means protection for you and for your families. Protection against disease, sickness, and death. This state health law, creating a metropolitan board of health and giving it wide powers is long overdue. As governor of the state of New York, it certainly meets with my approval and I'm glad to sign it. The long fight was over. And Dr. Stephen Smith had finally won a great victory. The state health law, which he and his committee had championed so long and so well, became the model for health laws throughout the country. Today, the influence of this man, surgeon, public health official, humanitarian, envelops every man, woman, and child in America, safeguarding their health and well-being. Through the continued efforts of Dr. Smith and his co-workers, There came into existence a National Board of Health and a National Public Health Association, which have been influential in cutting the death rate in America to less than half of what it was when the association began. Few doctors ever received the public honors that were heaped upon him. In 1922, at the age of 99, Dr. Stephen Smith, father of our public health laws, passed on leaving behind him a lifetime of service to mankind, an adventure in research that might be summed up in the saying, Cleanliness is very near to godliness. Today's story by Dr. Phillips Thomas, research engineer of the Westinghouse Research Laboratories, was titled, The Dread Scourge, Typhus. Join us again next week for another interesting story by Dr. Thomas on Adventures in Research.